What is going on guys? Today we're just going to be looking at gradients. Now there are three nodes that I'm going to be looking at which is just the linear gradient, the uh, diamond gradient and the radial gradient. So if you look here, the linear gradient will go up, down or left and right. The uh, diamond one will cause a diamond shape. This is quite weak or sort of uh, spread out more so it doesn't look like a diamond. But if I were to increase it, you'd get a shape more like this. And our spherical gradient, which is a sphere or radial gradient, sorry. So if I open up a material that I've got them all actually in already, you've got linear, you've got radial, and you've got diamond. So if we right click and you were to write any of these in, linear gradient, that's how you'll get these up. If you just write gradient in, you'll get a bunch of stuff come up, uh, but we're literally just going to be looking at linear, radial, and diamond. And if you were to click those, just to demonstrate it, that's how you get them in. So if I were to plug in U from here, and we go to plane, you'll be able to see it goes left to right. We go V. It goes up and down. Now, you don't have a lot of options here on the left. So something you can do, if you want to make it tighter, you can actually increase the, uh, the UVs. But I tend to just pre uh, prefer putting a cheap gradient in or something like that. So we put a cheap gradient in, plug that into there. Watch what it looks like if I were to put that to like five. You'll see that gets much sharper. And what you could do is beforehand, you could add an add there. Put a clamp over here or a saturate. So a saturate basically does what a clamp does, where it will make it so it can only go to the value of one. And we can slightly increase this value to make it so that shape that moves across here. So the highest value would be the higher or low, or the lower it would be. If we're going to negatives, it will bring it lower. So you can sort of determine where you want this to be. And this is working as your smoothness slash sort of sharpness of where that, how strong that line is going to be. You can do the same thing with our uh, diamond gradient, but you do get a fallout here. So we'll look at that in a second. You can also, if you don't want it to be this way around when you start your gradient off and you want it to be the opposite. So you want it to be um, light at the top, dark at the bottom. You can drag that off right one minus and this will invert whatever you put into it. So in this case, we're going to invert this. So where it goes to the value of zero at the top, we'll go one. But if one at the bottom, we'll go to zero. Plug it in. And there we go. I like to use linear gradients for lots of different things. A very quick example would be using it for grass. The tip of grass tends to be lighter and the bottom tends to be darker. Even if you're trying to sort of simulate that there's more shadow volume at the bottom, uh, you can make it a little bit darker and it'll look like it sort of blends in with the terrain a little bit more. Uh, up to personal preference, but that's one of the reasons I use it. Now, radial gradient. If we just plug this straight in, you'll see we'll get a circle. And these uh so where it says like v if it says v1 v2 v3 or s would be basically v1 to be scalar v2 means it's a uh, two vector which means we want to put in we'll put in a two vector or two constants so two and left click and it means these two separate values so if i plug the red and blue in uh they'll count as a one vector but if we plug in the white we can now change these values to move its center point so its center point is there at the moment, which means its default is probably 0.5 and 0.5. I could be wrong. It might be 1 and 1. Nope, 0.5, 0.5. So now if I change it to 1 and 1, it's likely going to be in the bottom right. So it means you're able to sort of move where you want the circle to be. Uh, I don't tend to have a use for this very often, but you can sometimes find a use. It really depends on how your UV map is set up to really work with it. Uh, let's just delete that one for now. Now we'll use our radial. So this one you can use a scalar or one constant. So one and left click or S and left click. And we can turn it into an instance. But we'll just use one and left click. Radial. And on this one, we have zero. And you can see there's nothing there. As we turn this vo uh, volume up, you're going to make this bigger. And if we go 0.2. Like that. And as we go up and up and up, we're going to get a much bigger circle cover the entire thing. As you can see, that's very big. It kind of just looks like we're having just the edges now uh, slightly dark because the circle is so big. And the last one, so we'll set it at the 0.5, uh, that's kind of important, is going to be our density. Mm -hmm. So at zero, we've got no density to it, so we'll set it to one for now. And this will kind of be its sharpness. So if we set it to 50... it's going to get a lot sharper. 
Now, I'd always, just in case, add a saturate to the end of this, to make it so it's definitely going between the values of 0 and 1. But yeah, that works as sort of uh, your sharpness, kind of like what we set over here for the linear gradient. Last one is our diamond gradient. So if we plug this one in, and that, again, you can invert this if you want. You can just plug things into a LERP anyways. So if you look at your LERP, let's say we've got two different colors. We've got like, uh, we want the top to be red and we want the bottom to be green. Actually, you might be left and right anyway. So if you, here you go. So if we, if we were like, no, 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 we want it to be inverted, but I want to be the green on the left. You could do a one minus. I typed that wrong. You could do a one minus and plug that into alpha and it will swap them. So it will work, but you're adding a whole, uh, like another node. What you could just do instead is swap these over. So you don't need to invert it. You could do if you feel like it's being more convenient for what you're setting up, but you could just swap over what you've got plugged into the lab anyway. Uh, yeah, our last one is diamond. And this one works in a very similar way. If we go into our fall off, have it to zero, it's going to look like complete white. And as we turn this up, we're going to increase that fallout value. If we have it really high, I don't even know if five is considered that high. We'll check. You will see it's going to become more of a diamond shape. Well, kind of. I very, very, it looks a little more like a star. I very rarely use this one, um, but you can set it up to do what we've been doing like the others for. Like it can make it sort of this big. So it's kind of, the fallout's kind of working as a size. If we then swap that uh, or attach that to a cheap contrast, Hold one left click to get a one constant, plug that all in. And if I were to set that really high, we'd sharpen it up and we'd be able to get a shape like that apparently. So yeah, um, you can set that up like that too. And that's basically the three basic gradients that I use. Linear one uh, being the one I use the most common, radial one being the one I use the second most common, and then a diamond one I rarely use only for very specific things. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if we click apply, I'll apply it to a... Uh, actual surface for a second bonk and there we are hope you guys enjoyed this video and i catch you in the next one